Thanks very much. Today on The Real Story, the president's harshest critic on NSA spying, Senator Rand Paul, who's suing the administration, joins me to tell me what he thinks of the changes Mr. Obama ordered today. Plus, former Defense Secretary Robert Gates absolutely unloads on Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Real talk for our political panel. And a woman falls off a cruise ship, and we have the don't miss video to prove it. Also, sex trafficking at the Super Bowl? Did you know it's a big business? Senator Amy Klobuchar and Cindy McCain, both of them teaming up before the Super Bowl to try and stop it. Hi, everyone. I'm Gretchen Carlson. Welcome to The Real Story for a Friday. Some big changes could be coming to the way our government spies on us. President Obama proposing new limits on the NSA and the way the agency stores information on hundreds of millions of Americans. His proposals all based on recommendations from a White House appointed panel. The big one, he wants to strip the NSA of its ability to store massive amounts of phone records, but offered no recommendations for where to actually move all that stuff. And there will apparently be no more spying on friendly, so-called friendly, international leaders unless there's a specific threat. The president asking the intelligence community and the attorney general to deliver a transition plan within 60 days. The president today also addressing the NSA's critics. Meanwhile, a number of countries, including some who have loudly criticized the NSA, privately acknowledge that America has special responsibilities as the world's only superpower, that our intelligence capabilities are critical to meeting these responsibilities, and that they themselves have relied on the information we obtain to protect their own people. The recommendations coming on the heels of a report claiming the NSA has collected and stored almost 200 million text messages. That's a day here at home and around the world. Let's bring in our spy panel for the day. Michael Kay is a former advisor to the UK's Ministry of Defense. Doug Burns, a former federal prosecutor. And Brooke Goldstein is an attorney and director of the Law Fair Project. Great to see you, spy panel. Thank okay. you. All right, Brooke, let me start with you. The first thing that the president said he was gonna to change today. You gotta to go back to the FISA court to be able to go in and actually look at somebody's personal information. This is going back to pre 9-11 thoughts. I think it's a very positive move on his behalf. You know, a lot of the critics are, are critical of the program because of the secrecy of it. And he, the president said today that he was going to release some of the decisions by the FISA court. But at the same time, we're seeing this inconsistency in the messaging. You have Holder that gave a press conference just two days ago saying that it's going to be unlawful to, to collect the data on anyone because of their national origin. And in this speech, President Obama referenced the Al-Qaeda in Yemen and the terrorists in Sahel hell in Africa as a justification to collect data on them. So it's total inconsistency in messaging. Here. You see it the same way, Doug, and I mean, you're an attorney as well. Yeah. So how does this FISA court thing work? No, I think it was a very positive move, as my colleague says, to step up to the microphone and say, we're going to make changes. Um, we're going to make it so that you have to go to court in order to distribute it, and we're going to change the way it's stored. Although, as you pointed out right at the outset, what does that really mean, and how's that going to work? So my segue is, what's going to happen logistically? How's this really going to work? How are they going to differentiate someone who's friendly versus not friendly? Um, and the FISA court's still secret, so well, the it, other it, thing it's is, hard to say. He also mentioned Congress, yeah. saying that he was going to go back to Congress for some input, and already members of Congress have a lot to say about that. Like. Well, where does that leave us? Well, I'm not the political expert, but I think that it's a separation of powers thing, and the president wants to take pressure off himself. All right, Mikey, I got to go to you on the monitoring of our friendly people. Not going to happen anymore, but quick to point out that we might still spy on those friendly people's advisors. Yeah, I mean, firstly, my gut, my gut reaction is, is that I don't, I don't actually think that's going to happen. I'd like to pick up on what Brooke said. I think increase, increased transparency is great. What Doug says, how do you actually enforce this? Um, it's all very well having increased transparency and coming up with these new regulations, but how do we actually make sure that they're enforced and what's being said is going to happen does actually happen? So it says a third-party data storage yet to be named. What, what does that mean? Well, it means the burden is now going to be on corporations, and the president didn't say anything about what's going to happen to corporations like Google, like Yahoo, who are losing business because the public doesn't trust them anymore. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, you know, spying, spying, I don't even like the world, but collecting data on foreign officials, why are we unilaterally giving up our ability to do that when we don't have mutual assurances from the leaders of well, other countries? Well, the interesting thing is we would have never known about any of this had it not been for two words, Edward Snowden. Snowden. Well, so well, where right. does that leave us with yeah. that? Well, we, I think we've got to, the NSA has to go back to core principles. And what it has to do is it has to target, it has through intelligence and data, it has to look at, Defer, um, deter and defeat 
the real threat, which is Al Qaeda, right. and it's and it's Al Qaeda metastasizing in ungoverned spaces in Syria. It's got over 11,000 foreign fighters in that region at the moment. 73 of them are known to be from the U.S. holding U.S. passports, and Al Qaeda are known to be through track conversations trying to get those 73 foreign fighters to export terrorism. Well, so, back so how in. is that going to hurt our fight of terrorism? Because another thing he said is now you cannot request data to people beyond a terrorist target. Well, now, I don't know is, exactly what that means, no, because sometimes my, you find out the terrorist target from actually investigating, Michael's right? Michael's point is critical, which is, you know, you, we're talking about apples and oranges. I mean, apples is legitimately fighting terrorism. Oranges is collecting data from millions of innocent people. So how do you, you know, mix that? That's the point. Um, and I think he's right. You have to really focus on legitimate terrorism battling, but at the same time, well, you've got to be careful. Brooke, what about Edward Snowden? You've done a lot of work at the U.N. Will this now push the calls for amnesty for him, or what are we going to do with him? First of all, I just want to say I've done a lot of work criticizing the I U.N. Know. I haven't <laughs> heard with the U.N. <laughs> Edward Snowden broke the law, okay? And, and that remains the fact. But, but going back, you know, to, to what Doug was saying in terms of the lines being drawn, I don't care if you're two people removed, three people removed, ten people removed from a terrorist. If a court says there's probable cause, there's enough evidence to justify a conviction, then that warrant should be issued. So President Obama shouldn't be drawing these false lines when it comes to investigating those that may give us leads to acts of terrorism. I think, I think the Edward Snowden piece, I, I didn't quite sign up to Brooks view on Edward Snowden in terms of breaking the law and it's black and white. Um, Congress wouldn't know that it was being spied on if it wasn't for Edward Snowden. Um, foreign leaders around the world wouldn't know they were being spied on if it wasn't for Edward Snowden. So you either, you either lay in one camp or the other. Mm. If, you disagree, if you agree with the fact that Edward Snowden should be penalized, right. then you, you can't lay claim to the NSA doing all these you know, additional yeah, you know and extra spy activities. What else has he not other. told us? But I would work both sides. I would say it's interesting. I agree that he broke the law. And then I agree also that it may have caused something good. But that's a classic law school hypothetical. Somebody breaks the law <laughs> and good comes out of it. Well, guess what? They're still technically guilty, but some good may have come out of it. All right. Very interesting. Spy panel, we learned a lot today. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. My pleasure.